Hello creatives, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela, a graphic designer and an illustrator. And today I'm gonna to show you different ways to be able to master gradients. And some of these may shock you because they're very simple, but very effective. The first type of gradient, it's very interesting how easy it is. Open up a photo here. This is, this is a photo that I received from Unsplash and this is not sponsored. I just really like the photographers over there on Unsplash. They do a really great job and we're going to make all of these fall themed. This is going to be super simple. Once you have your image placed, it can be any image you want. It does not matter. Let me place a few more. It will work no matter what. So you have a photo. I'm going to use these two. You can select the photo, go up to effects and choose blur. I like to choose Gaussian blur. It's just the easiest one. Blur it as much as you possibly want to, as far as you want to go about 60 pixels, we get a really beautiful gradient. Let's clip mask this to the artboard. I have these in poster size. To be able to clip mask, all you have to do is create a shape and then whatever you want your image to be inside of, select both the image and the shape and press control seven on your keyboard. It is the shortcut for creating a clipping mask in Illustrator. And you have this beautiful gradient happening. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Instead of 60 pixels, I'm going to take it down a little bit, probably go more to 40, 45. That looks pretty good. And you have instant gradients. Like this is the easiest way to get complex gradients without having to put too much effort into it. You can also take the image. If you double click in, you can take the image, you can turn it, you can spin it, you can reflect it. I'm going to flip this one properties panel under the transform options. I'm going to flip it upside down, flip it vertically. You can flip it horizontally as well and get the desired effect that you want. You always press escape to get out of it. I do have a, another one. Let's place one more. This is a pumpkin patch. <laughs> very appropriate. Shrink it down slightly. I want all the pumpkins. So this is a very, very easy and simple way to get gradients. You can pull the colors from these photographs and you can create your own gradients. I'm going to do one more effect. I'm going to wave this one and just wave warp it slightly. Clip mask it to the artboard and we have some pretty fun gradients going on here. Let's do one more. Let's do a green one. Now this photo is horizontal. So you can do it with horizontal photos as well. Even if your orientation is vertical, you can always flip them. Blur it all the way out. I'm going to turn this about 90 degrees. Send that to the back. We still have our shape here that we copied over and we have an array of different gradients going on here. There is another way we can do this. We can pull colors using our eyedropper tool. I'm just going to pull this dark orange, put it in our swatches here. Okay. I'm going to do this yellow one and you can turn all of these into Pantone process colors as well. I'm going to do this like dusty pink. This is a great way to pick uh, color tones as well is to just grab it straight from blurred out photos like this. With this, we can add all kinds of topography on it. We can do different messaging. All right, so we have a color palette. Let's choose our shape, fill the artboard, and we can do what is called a freeform gradient. I have not done freeform gradients too much on this channel. However, today we're going to. And our gradients are over here on the mine's on the right toolbar underneath the color options there are three options for gradients here there's linear there's radial and then there's freeform so i'm going to choose freeform and it just pulls the most used colors that are in the document at the moment uh, which are actually very nice <laughs> i do like this color this tonal range that they have already set here and anyone that you place, because you're just placing color markers, anyone that you place, you can double click onto it and you can change the color directly in here. And you can create some really beautiful gradients in here. Try not to use too many colors. And you can have different gradient tones just like this it's using the freeform gradient tool. You can also take this and duplicate it. I duplicate by pressing Control C and Control F on my keyboard. You can also do Command C, Command F, or Command C, Command B. Command C, Command or Control C and Command Control F are just a copy and then paste in place. Um, it's not the same across 
different programs. However, that is what it is in Illustrator. With this gradient selected, add it to our swatches panel by just taking the shape and dragging and dropping it into the swatches panel and it creates that gradient swatch for you. Take our pencil tool and let's draw a random shape. With this shape, apply the gradient swatch, blur it out to where it blends nicely within the background. We can change the orientation of it with the colors so that it gives it a much different look. We can add different text on here. Let's do a nice Franklin Gothic. I'm holding down shift to keep the font within its constrained proportions. Add an effect to this. I want to keep, let's make this white. And we can warp this, we can wave it vertically and stretch it unconstrained. I did a keyboard shortcut for outline the text. My keyboard shortcut is control shift and O. You can find it under type and create outlines at the top toolbar. I'm going to change some of these points and make it a little bit more fluid, <laughs> just like that. So we can make very simple posters just like this, utilizing this very simple technique of creating gradients. On this one, we can do change. We can even do different fonts. And this is really very simple. You can do this with any photograph. You can do this with any color palette. Make sure that your colors blend well together, blend them seamlessly and create that balance. I'm gonna choose a different font here for this one. Oh, let's do opaque heavy. All the fonts that I'm using are free fonts, so it's nothing that you won't be able to get your hands on. Make a few duplications here. Let's set this one behind. Make it white. You can make it any color you want. Stretch this unproportionately without having to do any other effect if you choose to. For this one, let's do, let's do a twist. And if you ever need to change your effects, you can always go into your properties panel on the right toolbar and select the effect that you already have applied there. It will show up under the appearance section under opacity and you can change up the aspects and the options available within the settings there. I do suggest making sure that your text stays live so that way you can change everything as you go along because if I wanted to add an S to this, I can add an S to this. So I wouldn't always create outlines, especially if I want to make changes. This one over here, this one is really quite abstract and beautiful. Dive in to gradients, pick some of your favorite photos. It could be a photo that you take in yourself, apply these techniques and have fun with it. And you can create some really fun pieces, especially for social media. And there are other ways to do gradients as well. There is the radial gradients and the linear gradients that I mentioned before. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to just take my pencil tool and come over to this one here. Let's just create a random shape. Get rid of that point. There's my pathway. For this one, let's do a radial gradient in the gradient panel. It's the, it's the central one. Add in our colors. You can do that on the color bar down here in the panel, or you can click in to the shape. Let's go to our swatches. I'm going to do this one. Double click in, I'm gonna do the pink one. Set that one in, make it smaller, duplicate it, make it bigger back here. Send it backwards. There's a very handy tool in the gradients panel. Right here underneath the uh, fill and stroke option right here, there is a button and this reverses your gradient. So you don't have to go in and do it manually, which I find to be very handy. It looks exactly like this. Now I'm gonna add in another color here. Whoa, let's just pull these sliders across down the bar and let's make, let's pull this color actually, there we go. Once you click in, you can see there is a path for the radial gradient here. You can pull the path line to make it longer and stretch it. You can also select these dots here on this dotted line to transform the shape of your radial gradients and also to rotate it and move it and change its shape. I'm gonna change this to 35 degrees, uh, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, sounds good. You can move it, you can stretch it, change the shape as much as you want. And if you select the path itself and drag, you can move it across. 
I'm going to blend these two together. Oh, my blend options are different. Take this outer shape by double clicking it, double clicking in and selecting it. I'm going to blur it. Not that much. Blur it by five. We can apply some of the type techniques that I showcased in a previous video. If you have not seen that, go ahead and check that out. It is always linked in the description box for you all. And we can make a blend between these two right here. I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut to make the blend, bring it all the way to the front. <laughs> we need blending options. Hold on one second. Blend options. Specified steps. There we go. You can make a lot of different looks and a lot of different pieces within using lots of different types of gradients. But test out the blurring of different photographs. I think it's very useful myself. It's very quick. It's very easy, especially if you are struggling to do freeform gradients or radial gradients or linear gradients yourself. It's definitely a game changer. And this idea does come from Jamie Gannon. She is here on YouTube and she's also on TikTok. I have put her in a video before where I reacted to a uh, graphic design TikTok. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check that out too. And she is very lovely, very sweet. She's a web UX UI designer, I believe. And she does use techniques like this as well. And it definitely saves you some time and some aggravation. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. You can see all of these posters on my Instagram. It is always linked in the description box down below. I will have a few more of these over on my Patreon. I do have a Patreon. It's always linked down below for you all as well if you want to check it out. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all in my next video. See you soon, creatives.